In this episode of Latitudes, we hook up with fisherman Steve Cooper, who explores the history of the Samoan hotel Aggie Grays and samples the plentiful waters of this fabulous little island. From the tropics to Manchester, England, to tour one of the world's best museums, the Museum of Science and Industry. We then get back to the tropics and visit Pepper's Bloomfield Resort for some adventure and pampering. Aggie Gray's hotel has become a legend in the Pacific. Renowned as a meeting place for visitors who enjoy a taste of the real Samoa. The hotel was founded in 1933 by the late Aggie Gray, who was the daughter of a Scottish chemist and his Samoan wife. She initially created a hamburger stand and sold hamburgers to the American servicemen at the time. She built it up over the years and today it still remains in the family and is now operated and managed by her grandson. Aggie Grace is renowned all over the world and is synonymous with world-class hospitality. The original hotel became a renowned club for American servicemen. As recently as 1987, the hotel was completely refurbished into this luxurious resort. It doesn't much resemble the original building, but the hospitality that Aggie Gray built is still part of the Aggie Gray Hotel experience. In fact, Aggie Gray's is very much a legend of the South Seas. Some of the Farleys are named after some of the celebrities that have holidayed here. Film stars like Gary Cooper, William Holden, the star of many Western classics, and the wild one himself, Marlon Brando. Royal families, including the Windsors, have also stayed at this famous hotel resort. A treat not to be missed while at Aggie Gray's is the fire dancing show. Fire dancing is an athletic and dramatic display of skill and spectacle. The dancers wear traditional lava lava and leafed costumes. The dancers twirl fiery handheld batons while energetically moving to the beat of the slit drum. Great talent is required to perform these feats. The importance of fire dancing cannot be understated in Samoa's culture. Patti Lavasa, the world champion for the third year running, is part of this troupe. After a relaxing and entertaining night of Aggie Gray hospitality, Steve Cooper and his friend Peter get an early morning start and leave the small Samoan port to head out into the deep Pacific Ocean in search of some game fish. Fishing trips are arranged by Aggie Grays for anyone who wishes to try their luck in catching a prized game fish. Steve has decided to troll for the morning session. So he and Peter discuss the best options and prepare their lures and bait. Within an hour, Steve has hooked up a magnificent example of a dolphin fish. The fish was attracted to Steve's lure and begins to put up a tremendous fight. This type of action is a common occurrence for visitors who take the opportunity to fish the plentiful Samoan waters. The dolphin fish is a true pelagic hunter. They're fast, powerful and have a high level of endurance, which makes them a much sought after species for game fishermen. The dolphin fish will fight right up to the time it's landed. This example is a fair sized fish, however they do grow considerably larger. Even Steve, who's fished the world and is one of Australia's premier fishing writers, has difficulty subduing this dolphin fish. Like many fishermen around the world, Steve believes in catching and releasing and only takes the occasional fish to eat. Ready, Jeff? This dolphin fish will live to perhaps give another Samoan visitor the chance of experiencing the thrill of hooking up a prized catch. For the afternoon, Steve and Peter decided to try cubing to attract game fish to the boat. 
Peter is demonstrating the cutting up of pilchards into tasty and alluring bite-sized morsels for the unsuspecting game fish. Amongst the cubes, Steve will spool out this lure, which looks like the head of a pilchard. With a bit of luck, Steve is hoping that a game fish will mistake his lure for the real thing. The lure simply sits in the water and the natural rocking of the boat makes the lure dance and simulate a fish in distress. In this instant, the cubes have attracted a magnificent sailfish. This species is regarded as highly as the mighty marlin within the game fishing fraternity. The cubes and the lure were obviously not inviting enough for this sailfish. Maybe Steve had caught it once before and released it and it's now wiser for the experience. The cubes did, however, attract another dolphin fish. This dolphin fish swims with strength and in deliberate movements. This time, Peter gets the chance to pit his wits against a Samoan dolphin fish. The fight really begins when the fish gets close to the boat. You can never be assured of catching a dolphin fish until it's secured in the boat. Peter has lost this dolphin fish, but enjoy the battle. Steve and Peter examine the lure for damage, as dolphin fish have a tendency to strike very fast and very hard, which can damage an expensive lure. During other episodes of Latitudes, we'll continue to travel with Steve to other holiday destinations that offer great fishing. If you're planning a holiday in England, a visit to the Museum of Science and Industry in Manchester is a must. It's one of the most exciting and innovative museums in the world. Fittingly, the museum is housed in the world's oldest passenger railway terminal. There is an incredible array of topics, displays and interactive programs for both young and old. Many international tourists are visiting the museum. This includes families, experts in various fields of industry, and enthusiasts who wish to explore the Industrial Revolution. For aviation enthusiasts, this display is sure to enthrall. From those magnificent men in their flying machines, the AV Row triplane of 1909, to the first British jet to break the sound barrier, is on display and demonstrates English ingenuity and manufacturing at its best. This is the ejector seat developed by the British in the 1940s. The Avro 504K is one of the most successful mass-produced aeroplanes made in Manchester. A sports trainer, it testified to the vitality of the local aviation industry. And here is the Avro Shackleton, a development of the Lancaster bomber. It was built locally at Woodford near Stockport. It's the best preserved example of its kind in the world. In a special case are mementos of Alcock and Brown's first historic flight across the Atlantic in 1919, which holds a commemorative medal, their trusty compass, and their lucky teddy bear and Shreddy the cat. The Power Hall is where the British genius for invention is exhibited at its height. The power room is filled with throbbing machines, from the water wheel to steam-driven mill engines. 
It's here that you'll feel the beginnings of a revolution that changed the world. It's a fascinating working collection, where everything from a pin to a steam engine was made. What the museum reflects is the workings of a Victorian city and how the city developed. The museum presents this in such a way that children can understand how the city was built. The museum has proved a favourite for children and grandparents who actually use the machines. Another great exhibit is this steam locomotive, which plied its trade on the Isle of Man from Douglas to Peel until the 1950s. These wheels, mills and looms were certainly built to last. This diesel engine took over from the steam engine in 1928. They're still used in developing countries throughout the world. Others, like this hot air engine, were used to drive light machines and even church organ bellows. One industry that is presented that did not last was Manchester's preeminence as the world centre for the manufacture of cotton. Everything from cotton clothes, sheets and bedding to the special dyes were developed in Manchester. This was the raw material imported into Liverpool and then transported up to Manchester Ship Canal to Cottonopolis. But it was the genius of the machine inventors that changed the face of the world of fabric. Richard Arkwright invented the water frame for spinning cotton between 1769 and 1775. As machines like the spinning mule and the Lancashire loom were developed, the whole industry took off. The Fibres, Fabrics and Fashion Hall has interactive exhibits like this method of spinning cotton thread. The museum has proved a favourite for children and grandparents who actually used such machines. A bale of cotton could have enough yarn to stretch from Manchester to New York. This 19th century warehouse holds a machine that has revolutionised the 21st century. This exhibit explains the start of our electronic advancement. This is a replica of the world's first computer to be able to store an actual programme. It was created at Manchester University and unveiled on June 21st, 1948. The replica was built in 1988 by a team of enthusiasts from these photographs to mark its 50th anniversary. It's hard to believe that this monster was once state-of-the-art. It weighs a tonne and is over two metres high and five metres long, but has less computing power than a modern calculator. The most popular gallery in the museum is Experiment. More than 300,000 visitors a year come here to poke, prod, push and pull. It's a hands-on science gallery, which is mainly for children. The experiment tries to show children the basics of what many of the museum's exhibits were founded on. This part of the museum is all about interactivity, the chance to get your hands on something and make it work. It seems even the days of the old glass case exhibit is also a thing of the past. Change is part of our world, and the curators of this department intend to regularly alter displays. From early machinery to the internet, the Museum of Science and Industry is an excellent example of how a museum can bring the past, the present and even the future to life. This is Australia's far north. It's a remarkable land and holds many different types of adventure as well as many different types of geographical landscapes, from deserts to wetlands to tropical rainforests and the Great Barrier Reef. All can be explored from the Peppers Bloomfield Lodge. If you've dreamed of escaping to a remote tropical paradise, then you're going to enjoy Peppers Bloomfield Lodge. 
you'll be picked up from your hotel and escorted to the airport and get a full flight briefing from an experienced hinterland aviation pilot. Today I'll be taking us uh, from Cairns to Bloomfield, it's about 30 minutes flight The flight. Bloomfield Actually, experience starts here at Hinterland Island. Aviation in Cairns and flies over the Great Barrier Reef, one of the seven natural wonders of the world, and a spectacular untouched rainforest of North Queensland. on an outback airstrip, the friendly staff from Pepper's Bloomfield Lodge will escort you on a short four-wheel drive trip to the banks of the Bloomfield River. And best of all, your luggage will be handled by the staff, so you're free to take in the sights and enjoy the short trip to the river. From here, the lodge's boat will cruise down the Bloomfield River, through the bay, then on to the lodge. Be prepared for one of the driest landings as your boat lets down its wheels and is pulled ashore. It might be remote here, but there is no need to rough it. You don't even get your feet wet. Pepper's Bloomfield Lodge is an extreme and unique place in Australia, and there is a maximum of 34 guests allowed to stay at any given time. And this gives Bloomfield an intimate and relaxed atmosphere. Dress is informal at Bloomfield, and they provide most of the basic items that you need so that you can travel lightly. On arrival, you'll be provided with a complimentary refreshing drink before you're escorted up to your room. Accommodation is of the highest standard. Pepper's Bloomfield Lodge is a member of the small luxury hotels of the world, so expect the best. The rooms are serviced daily and you can choose from a range of cabins. There are the poolside range cabins, the slightly larger Queenslander cabins, deluxe cabins or honeymoon cabins all have their own individual character. All the meals served here are exceptional and are prepared fresh daily and are served in relaxed comfort in the open-air dining room. You'll experience the best selection of the local seafood, sumptuous steaks and vegetables, tropical fruit and desserts are the specialty. Besides a relaxing tranquility that is Bloomfield's essence, activities in and close to the lodge are plentiful. This is one of the most memorable of Bloomfield's activities, an expertly guided walk that offers a fascinating insight of an Australian tropical rainforest. Bloomfield's Big Mama is a luxury sailing vessel that is used to take guests on various sailing adventures. This is Bloomfield's most popular excursion, a full day trip aboard that'll take you towards Hope Island, part of the Great Barrier Reef's marine park. These beautiful islands are ideal for snorkeling and fishing.
This gentleman is showing his magnificent catch and was thrilled with the quality of this fishing experience. You'll learn about the history and the ecology of the mangroves and its magnificent wildlife. And you may even get to spot a crocodile or two. The guide explains that there are possibly six saltwater crocodiles located in this river, with three expected to be at least three metres in length, while the other three are possibly small juveniles that habitat in the surrounding area. There is just so much to do and enjoy while you stay at Bloomfields, but you'll just have to come and experience it for yourself. Other excursions and activities include four-wheel drive trips to the Bloomfield Falls, a day trip to the historic Cooktown, local fishing, bird watching, or you can pamper yourself back at the lodge with a relaxing massage or beauty treatment. The Bloomfield experience offers excellent value. Besides your selected accommodation, it includes three meals, breakfast, lunch and dinner, scenic flights and transfers from and to Cairns, the river cruises and the rainforest walk. If you're considering Australia as a destination, then be sure to look at Pepper's Bloomfield Resort. Join us again when we next trek the globe and explore fabulous and exciting holiday destinations. For further information regarding any story on this episode, log on to www.pbtv.com.au. This program is proudly supported by PATA and Always Dive Australia.